looking at some of the recent reports out on the reforms taking place in Nigeria's banking sector, we've seen the IMF over the weekend at that ongoing IMF World Bank annual meeting say that the reforms by the Central Bank of Nigeria to correct the lax lending standards in Nigerian banks would restore confidence in the banking sector. Of course, the CBN had sacked the management of five banks in the last three months and injected over 420 billion naira into the banks to buoy their operations and save customers' deposits. And now we've seen four more banks' executives under fire, along with a further capital injection of 200 billion naira into the latest affected institutions, raising the bailout for of funds for 10 banks in the country to 620 billion naira. Now, to provide us with a sense of the feeling on home turf right now, Kemi Odiason of Chapel Hill Denim joins us live from our studios over in Lagos. Thanks so much, Kemi, for joining us this afternoon. Well, I would imagine that the markets right now are sighing a big sigh of relief today as the CBN concludes its cleanup. What's the sentiment on the ground like right now? Um, the sentiment is extreme. Good morning. Uh, the sentiment, I think, is, 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 is positive. Um, <clears throat> The reaction to the program has been very positive in the markets and generally within the sort of the financial community. Um, it, it, it moves us towards where we're closer to where we're trying to go in terms of transparency uh, and in terms of standards of corporate governance. So, and the, and the reaction certainly on the market this morning has been extremely positive. The whole sector is up. Uh, uh, many of the banks, including some of the distressed ones, are trading mm. um, at a premium to where they closed last week. So I think that the general sentiment is extremely positive. Well, it certainly does take away some of the X factor that's been plaguing this market and been a huge uh, pressure point over the recent past. We've heard commentary that investors now know exactly where to put their money. Where exactly are you looking within the banking arena right now? Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of interesting opportunity. Clearly, uh, at a time like this, when you've had a major clear out, there, there, there's clearly opportunity. Um, we expect to see some consolidation. Uh, um, I think that the sector will definitely be smaller at the end of this exercise and, and you know there are a number of players you've got to look at who have capacity to play in terms of cons uh, further consolidations in the market um, and, and, and we'll be watching very closely to see where, uh, where that, that occurs. Also I think you've got to look at some banks as being targets for foreign um, mm -hmm. banks, foreign owned banks that want to enter the Nigerian market. This is a, a sort of opportunity on, on a platter really uh, and we've got to look and see where the attractive options are. Um, I think the governor has said you know there are four banks that are extremely important among the, the, the number, the eight that are um, currently under or current, have had their management removed. Um, and, and I think we, that's where a lot of the inorganic play will be. That's the union, that's Oceanic. Um, Intercontinental and PHB, they're, they're top tier mm. banks, they've got good branch networks. Um, operationally, the, they're quite strong, they've got good banking engines sitting under them and they've got to be uh, very interesting targets for people that are coming into the market. So you're looking at this option of a takeover by foreign investors, but there's also, as you mentioned, the potential for mergers with local peers to consider. Are there any rumours surrounding where these uh, potential tie-ups could be forged? No rumours, unfortunately, <laughs> but um, I mean, you could, we could speculate, and if you speculated, you've got to look at players like um, Zenith, you've got to look at UBA, you've got to look at First Bank, you've got to look at GT, all of these have capacity. Then if you go down into Tier 2, you've got to look at players that are very ambitious and aggressive and will be looking to maybe use this opportunity to become Tier 1 banks, uh, and those are names like Access, names like FCMB, names like Sky, uh, and even Diamond. So. Um, you know, uh, uh, what people will do, what, what particular value proposition these banks are looking for, we don't know. And of course, uh, you've got to mention Stanbit. They've done mm -hmm. that deal with IBTC, but they're still not quite big enough in this market. And I'll, uh, there could be an opportunity for them to, to play. Yes. So it, it could be, I mean, it potentially is very interesting in, in, the, in the near term. Certainly because another option that's uh, really been emphasized is the raising of additional capital. We've seen uh, many of these banks come to the fore and announce plans to go ahead with a bond issue. We've had Diamond Bank, the latest amongst uh, those who have made these announcements. What do you see the viability of that being and the, the uptake of a bond, a corporate bond issue within the banking space being like uh, in the current environment? Yeah, I mean, clearly um, the bond issue option is an option that's very attractive to, to, to the banks at the moment. 
The problem I foresee is that everybody is, is trying to raise a bond at the same time, mm -hmm. and our market is not that deep. Um, at the moment, there's a flight to safety, so obviously um, the yields on federal government bonds have increased significantly, and it looks as if that's a fairly cheap way of raising money. The p problem is how much capacity is there in the market to actually buy these bonds. Um, I agree that pricing is, is clearly going to be an option, but even if you price it uh, at, at a huge premium, there's only so much um, capacity to actually absorb those bonds. Um, with the Lagos State bond, for example, the biggest buyers were the banks. Yeah. So if you take the banks out as potential buyers, now they're issuers, who, who are the buyers? Um, that, that's going to be a, a, a key issue. And with um, some capital impairment, occurring after the ND, NDIC and CBN joint audits with write-offs, uh, some of these banks may be mm. actually facing ratings downgrades, which would further in, impair their ability to, to float bonds uh, we, successfully. So, yes, it's a good option, but um, yeah. I'm not sure how deep the market is. Kemi, we speak of this clean-up process being over and done with, but, I mean, a market uh, commentator I was speaking to earlier this morning say, says that, uh, and he's along with many others, uh, said that uh, more clarity is being demanded from the market, that they want extreme uh, transparent status report on the banks that have been put under the spotlight so that they can weigh some of the risks independently. Do you see more clarity in that regard emerging from the central bank as we progress through this week? Sorry, I didn't quite catch your question. Are you asking whether there's more transparency as a result of this process? Whether we should be expecting more transparency to emerge, a more clear status report uh, emerging on these banks from the CBN during the course of this week. Um, I'm not sure that the CBN, I think the CBN possibly, I, I, I don't know, but my sense is that the CBN has said what they need to say okay. on this. If you're asking about the nine banks that um, were quote-unquote cleared, I think what we will see is in their own results that they issued to the market, um, their nine-month, their year-end results, mm -hmm. we will see the provisions that maybe the CBN and DIC audit um, resulted in them taking. We've already seen that with Diamond Bank, uh, and I think... Um, as as banks re release their third quarter year end results, we will see some yeah. some provisioning. That's where I think we will see what the CBA has okay. found or, or has to say about the nine banks that well, have been cleared. I don't, I'm not sure that CBN themselves will be saying much more. So certainly nothing anticipated uh, from the CBN at this point. Well, 